happening? It's your boy Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark show. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete. Do you just wake up and go hard? Be epic. We have a new studio home. Fishbowl Studios. The On Your Mark show is going to bring it to you every Wednesday, every week. We're going to talk recruiting, the best games around the state, and in the DFW, we'll get parents, players, coaches involved right here at Fishbowl Studios. Wednesday from 11 to 12, you can follow us on Facebook at On The Mark Sports, on Twitter at MarkHen44, on IG, Instagram at MarkHen underscore 44. We are epic every week. Check out the On Your Mark show at Fishbowl Studios. We out. What it do? What's happening? It's your boy Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark show. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete. Today, we just woke up and went hard. We're about to go hard today. Man, we appreciate everybody tuning in. We've been getting a lot of feedback, and let's go and let's get with it. Today, we got still got my co-host, my guy, CEO of Epic Sports Apparel, Stephon oh. Johnson. Today, Select 50, my guy, Chris Dubeck. We're going to talk about camps, what you need to do to get ready for those, what your offseason should be looking like. We'll start with that first. Coach, let's talk about offers and committable offers. Uh, those are a lot of things that get thrown around. Uh, you know, we got to know kind of what, you know, parents and players should know what the difference is. Just kind of shed a little bit of light on that. Okay. So, number one, parents, athletes, all the information is readily available for the most part on, on social media, uh, easy to find. The, the one thing I always tell parents is, you know, a, a committable offer is something that the school is saying, hey, we want you to commit. And if they like you enough, a coach will get on the phone with you and say, hey, we're, we're offering you. Can you commit now? That's one of the easiest ways to know if it's a, a committable offer. Um, there's also situations where, you know, you'll be on the phone with a coach and he say, hey, you know, this offer is, is not committable, but it's contingent upon various, you know, things. And it's, it's okay. Let me make sure I, I, I preface what I'm saying. It's okay to have a non-committable offer. The, the issue is um, a lot of times kids get caught up in the offer and forget to actually do the work. You still mm -hmm. got to produce. You still have to produce whether you get an offer in the ninth grade or the 12th grade because even if it's a committable offer, you can still get to the table and then not be there if you don't produce. So understand that more than anything. So the committable, not committable is it, kind of a, a play on words in a sense because early on, they're all not committable. Eighth grade, seventh grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, until you get to the point to where schools are saying, okay, I've seen enough, we really want you. Until then, you know, it, it's kind of we're, we're, we're locking you in to a certain extent. It's a handshake, but I can always take that back if I don't see what I like. If the business deal don't go the way I want it to go, I can always say, eh, I'm, I'm going to go a different direction. And remember, it doesn't matter how big you think you are. If they find somebody that is better, faster, and fits their, their team, a lot of kids go to the signing table and nothing is there because they didn't handle their business, whether it was on social media, classroom, uh, on the field, consistently be consistent because when you get to college, you have to be consistent to get on the field. So just remember that. But the, the difference between not committable and committable is I would always ask that question. Coach, you know, thank you for the offer. Is it committable or not committable? Not committable is I can't commit to this school and publicly say, hey, I am committed to university of blah, blah, blah. That's the difference. All right. And all of that stuff is, is you know, can be found out just by asking the right question. So now, Chris, uh, you've been in this game for a little while with this recruiting. Uh, just kind of shed some light on that. You know, coach kind of broke it down. But, uh, you know, when they come out of the select 50 showcases, we'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, but just in your experience, how do you kind of guide uh, the players and parents with that as well? You know, it's, it's interesting. One of the things I want to focus on that you shed light on and hammered home really was the non-committable offers. You know, we, it's amazing these days, seventh and eighth graders could get offers. I remember back in the day with Steve Clarkson and Dreammaker, David Sills, you know, Good Morning America got offered by Lane Kiffin at USC. Good, man, good Morning America, all this other stuff. But let's talk about the high school non-committable offers. You know, you talk about the grind. You talk about the work ethic. You talk about the continuance in the classroom, in the waiting room when no one else is looking. And that's when most offers are lost. 
you know, here's the thing. You may be God's gift to athleticism as a freshman and sophomore measurable wise, but there's other cats that are grinding. There's other guys that are putting in the sweat equity that are putting in that work, getting bigger, faster, stronger. And after your underclassman years, when you become an upperclassman, dudes have caught up to you. Not only have they caught up to you, they've lapped you. So that outstanding academic and athletic opportunity you had with your non-committal offer, all of a sudden, that's wet paper you're holding in your hand. That could fall right through your fingers because you know what? Like Coach said, you didn't put in the work. Non-committal is a great opportunity. It could be life-changing, but the work doesn't stop. So, you know, we talk about it like it's, it's, it sounds simple, but it's so complex because the grind is just 24-7, seven, seven days a week. And that's one of the things where, again, you know, guys don't get caught up in, in the early offers, don't get caught up in, in being wanted because you can overlook the process, and, and that is production. And, and that's why I always say you still got to produce, regardless of, mm-hmm. you know, having one offer or 50 offers, what are you bringing to the table? And a lot of things that I've always seen, and I know you can attest to this too, a lot of kids, no knock, but a lot of kids that get them early, they fall off. Not that, not that they don't have the athleticism right. in the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, but they already feel like, hey, I've arrived. Everybody wants me, so why do I work harder? Hmm. And the guys that work harder feel like I'm not being looked at, so I got to come get you. You the one with the offer, so I got to outwork you. So that's where the lapping comes in because of the mentality and I see it every weekend on the seven on seven circuit when you have guys in the seventh, eighth, ninth grade, you know, say, look me up, Google me. Wrong mistake, big mistake. Mm-hmm. Don't say that because now you're saying to the world, I've arrived. I'm good where I am. You know what, Mark? Big mistake. Coach, if I, I got I to gotta elaborate on this too. You know, we're talking about that non committal offer again. And let's talk about the lack of follow-up mechanism with high school student athletes these days that get that non-committal offer. They get the offer, they're connecting, they're, they're responding to text, social media, this, that, whatever. Then after that, it's like, all right, I'm gonna see who I can get better. I'm gonna see what offer is better. And you know what, it's almost like, what am I, not good enough? Am I chopped liver? Is my, is my academic athletic opportunity no longer good? The follow-up mechanism with student athletes these days, young men and women, don't drop the ball on that. Treat everyone as an equal. Give them the TLC. Thank the Lord that you have that academic opportunity lined up potentially in your hand. And and don't stop showing them love. A lot of kids these days just fall off the radar. Let me make that make sense, guys. Layman terms, he's saying don't big time coaches. Mm, you absolutely. get you get that one offer. Absolutely. And then you're you're before you get an offer, you see the tweet. I just want to be noticed. I just want one opportunity. And then when you get that one opportunity, you start big time in the one that gave you that one shot. And then you say, well, let me go get another one. Let me go get another one. Let me go get another one. Then you forget about the original one, right? Now, hear how it works, guys, okay? And I've seen it a lot of times. If you forget how to communicate with that one and keep that door open, that relationship cultivated, guess what? It all comes back around. If you lose it all, you can't go back to the beginning. It's not there. So, young guys, Young ladies, learn how to keep those conversations open. And you always say, hey, I just want to be wanted. But then what happens? How do you manage 40 offers? How do you manage those relationships? So be careful what you ask for if you don't have the tools to handle that process while you're going through it. Gems drop. Hope everybody's catching on it. All day, every day. Every day, all day. Just got to be epic about it. And that's what we're here on the On Your Mark show to do. Now, let's dive into another process, a piece that goes to that unofficial and official visits. Sometimes people don't understand what that means. Talk about that just a little bit and decipher what the difference is. I'll make it easy. Unofficial is on your dime. You pay for it. You have to show up. You know, now schools will allow you to, you know, be on the sideline at the games. They'll give you free tickets, you know, and, and kind of give you a window into what the, the major recruits get. Official is they're footing the bill. Dinner, flight, their hotel, everything. So that's on the school. That's when you know, okay, I really want it. Your junior year, you get four. Your senior year, you get four. Take them all if you haven't committed. 
that's a different conversation because if you got 30 offers by the time you're a junior, you should be committed. So, you know, take those visits so you can understand. It's a long process, guys, and, and, and I'm a system type person, right? You got to know how you fit into a system. Why do you think the transfer portal is so full? Mm. Because guys are like, I just want to be wanted. I just want to go here. I just want to go there. And then they get there and they're like, well, I, I don't fit this system. Even though I was told I could, but I'm not that guy, right? And then I don't understand how to work while I wait. So now, okay, I'm ready to go. So unofficial, it's on you. You have to pay to get there. And there's nothing wrong with that because – early on you want to be in a situation where you can go and, and feel the energy of the coaching staff talk to the players know what that feels like so that your kid and you can make a, a, a informed decision going forward right then once you do that then the school says hey we've seen enough you know once they make that offer committable then guess what comes behind that official visit Chris, talk about it. I love unofficial visits, Coach, and I'll tell you why. Because it allows us as coaches to see, is this young student athlete, are they going to be able to walk into our culture, our campus, our locker room, our weight room, and are they going to be able to represent this billion-dollar brand, this million-dollar brand that is collegiate athletics? Are they going to be a strong handshake? Are they going to look you in the eye? Are they going to talk with conviction, passion? If they're there on their own dime, that's their parents' hard-earned coin. What's their behavior going to be like? Are they going to act entitled or are they going to act thankful? Unofficial visits could, could be changing for every single program that looks at it the right way. And I'll tell you what, um, I'm always the one that look at the, the harder side of the fence and unofficial visits. They're incredible. They're of the utmost importance on top of a totem pole. It's good to be wanted. You're still wanted. But you haven't made it yet, which means – they're not just rolling out the red carpet for you. You better roll out the red carpet of personality, charm, appreciation, communication to the university and the coaching staff while you're there. Love unofficial visits. Love them. And Maybe there, may, down and on there that. may be 20 other guys at your position on that sideline. Right so there. So you might All make equal an impression. All equal size, right? speed, and strength. Exactly. These are the kind of things that Ooh. we want to shed the light on, just kind of get let people to know. Go ahead, Coach. All right. Let me, let me give you guys a, a, a little nugget, a free one. Mm. All right. So – my guys, my, my son, my nephews, all, all the kids that I've taken on road trips, one thing I demanded when we went on unofficial visits was they would have to give me 10 things about their position coach, about the school, uh, about the program, and about their position, Good. meaning does it fit them? You know, are there guys on the sideline, on the roster that look like them? Mm -hmm. What do you know about your position coach? the offensive coordinator if you play offense, defensive coordinator, the head coach. Give me 10 things that you know that are talking points because, guys, these are interviews. Whenever you step front in front of a coach, he's interviewing you on the spot, your eyes, your tone, all of those things. So if you know nothing about it in the workforce, you're, you're taught that you should never go to a job interview and not know about the company that's hiring you. This is no different, and I'm giving you free information. Awesome. No, no, no different. If you don't know about the school or the coaching staff that you're going to, do you really want to be there? And they're going to walk away wondering that if a talking point comes up and you know absolutely nothing about what's going on there, then they could walk away thinking this kid just want to be wanted. He don't really want to play ball because he don't know us. Mm -hmm. So how can you say you want to go here and you don't know nothing about the people that are there or the school? So I would force them or we don't go. If you can't give me information about why you want to go there and the people that are there, why waste my time going? That's the unofficial part that's beautiful. Not many people do that. So y'all steal that one from me. Absolutely. Now, before we take a small break, it's off season for a lot of guys that are not in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, camps, uh, you know, 707s, seven seven you know, uh, the tournaments, they're kind of like glorified camps. What do you need to do to decipher kind of which camps you need to pick? You know, let's just take, for example, you go to Penn State. Mm -hmm. You know, they invite, you know, 250 kids. Are you going to get seen there? Or do you go to a smaller camp, a smaller setting like an SFA or Texas A&M Commerce? 
How do parents and uh, you know players decipher through the muddy water to pick out the right camps to go to? Man, parents. <laughs> All right, so th this is going to be a, a, a. I'll give you the short version, and you can reach out to us. Don't hold back for for the longer version. No, it's a it's a long process. I, I I've kind of developed a, a process that I believe works for you know my kids, and and I think it work for a lot of different kids, and and that is depending on you know freshman year if you are um you know ahead ahead of the game as far as your athleticism your measurables you know things like that uh then it's okay to to venture out but here's the most important thing uh, that that people don't realize about going to your major camps texas texas and and m you know places like that if you go once you're in the ninth, 10th, and 11th grade, and they don't ask for you to be there, they're probably not going to see you unless you are amazingly fast mm -hmm. or you're, you're super tall or you take your shirt off and you look like a Greek god. Mm -hmm. They're probably not going to see you. And, and, and these points can, can easily be proven because there are four, five to 600 kids there. How are they going to see one when you're talking about maybe 50 to 70 coaches, maybe? You know, how are you going to see every kid that's there? So they're looking for guys that stand out. So how I looked at fixing that was, number one, the earlier, if I'm in the seventh, eighth grade, I can go to a college camp and it doesn't hurt my recruiting because then I want to, to see what that looks like. And only if that kid is still athletically uh, more advanced than your average seventh, eighth graders. You don't want to put a kid in a situation where he's going to get beat up and mentally take him out. So – Ninth grade, I want to do, you know, exposure camps, camps where I'm learning to get tools to add. Then I go to an exposure camp just to see if I know how to work the room, if I know how to steal reps, because it's organized chaos when you step foot on a college campus. You don't go to a college campus for exposure. You go to a college camp to get an offer. Understand that. Mm -hmm. You're going there to be recruited, not for exposure. It's a difference because if you go for exposure, you'll get exposed. Mm -hmm. Period. So there is a, a pecking order to how I figured, you know, these camps work. And again, just depending on the kid, you have to know your kid. You have to know, are they going to be quiet? Are they going to steal reps? You can't go to a camp and you just stand in the back and just kind of look and wait and let everything happen because they want guys that are going to rise to the occasion. They want guys that are going to be hungry so they can say, hey, I seen this kid. This kid had 30 reps. If you go and get five, you wasted your time. They may not see that. So, again, it's, it's, it's knowing your kid, knowing, you know, where to go. That, that's another important thing, right? Because early on, your kid may be undersized. Don't waste your time going to a big school if your running back is 5'8", 120 pounds, and everybody on their roster is six foot 205. They're not going to be looking at your kid as a running back. So you wait it out. You go to camps where it kind of mimics where they are. They're not going to project your 5'8 kid to be 6'1", 6'2", that early. They're not going to do that. So, again, it's just a, about having to understand where to camp, when to camp, and is your kid, most important, ready to camp. That is a grind. That is a grind, grind, grind. And you can mess your kid up by throwing them out there to the wolves, and they do horrible because everything they put on paper is going to their recruiting. So, that's the short of it. We'll, we'll touch base on that later. Well, we're about to get into the Select 50 Showcase with my guy, Chris Dubeck here. Yes, sir. I'm We're going to take a small break here on the On Your Mark Show, live from the Fishbowl Network and the Fishbowl Studios, powered by Epic Sports Apparel. We'll be right Let's back. Let's get it. What's happening? It's your boy Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark show. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete. Do you just wake up and go hard? Be epic. We have a new studio home. Fishbowl Studios. The On Your Mark show is going to bring it to you every Wednesday. Every week we're going to talk recruiting, the best games around the state, and in the DFW we'll get parents, players, coaches involved right here at Fishbowl Studios. Wednesday from 11 to 12. You can follow us on Facebook at On The Mark Sports. On Twitter at markhen44 on ig instagram at markhen underscore 44 we are epic every week check out the on your mark show at fishbowl studios we out
On the On Your Mark Show, powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete. Let's talk camps, particular camp, Select 50 Showcase. My guy Chris Dubeck is here to shed some light on that. We're going to talk about it a few Select 50 All-Americans. I've had a chance to come and scout these camps. It's been some of the best uh, guys, some of the best athletes from around the country, mm. specifically here in Texas because I'm a scout here in Texas. But we're going to talk about that a little bit. Chris, just kind of give me the back – you know, the backstory on Select 50 and how you kind of got this together. I'll send it. You know, I, I've had tremendous mentors in life across my 25 plus years uh, in pro and amateur sports. And, you know, throughout that journey, the constant that was always nurtured was upgrading lives, was helping men and women become what they want to become. You know, I'm a coach. That's what I am. Life coach, sport coach, whatever you want to call me. I coach my kid. I, I, I just coach. I want to help people have it better than I ever did. So when you talk about the Select 50, it was birthed about five years ago under the umbrella of EXOS, you know, the, the number one sports performance group in the world, uh, trains the most pro athletes, pro teams, pro leagues, and what have you. Coach Stefan and I were just talking about God's gift to athletic training, Coach Brent Calloway with EXOS, and, you know, they, they nurtured this. They allowed this to be birthed. And the Select 50, it's a, it's a small, intimate, private, showcase environment where groups like prep red zone um, rivals 24 7 sports and numerous other groups and affiliates they come out there to provide exposure we were talking about college camps versus exposure camps well men that come to this are looking for exposure but also you have within the select 50 the dna of it is the men that are five stars four stars three stars on this espn 300 list or you know five star on this 24 7 sports thing whatever they're coming to that because they want to follow in the footsteps of the other athletes that have worn Select 50 on their chest. To put it simple, the Select 50 is an environment that helps men and women become what they want to become in life. It's a, it's a showcase environment where we're thankful to have media groups in particular. You, Marcus, you know, I look at what you do for these student athletes, and I'll tell you what, man, the sweat equity, uh, the, the, the long days you put into it, the TLC you give in, in creating extra layers and chapters for these student athletes who are either here or here in the recruiting picture or not even in the recruiting picture are simple prospects. I applaud greatly what you do, and you've helped the Select 50 become what it's become, and I thank all of those men and women who have come to each and every event to, to provide a launch pad for all these student athletes. So take it from there, brother. Man, you know. well, that's what we do. We want to shed the light on hidden gems, those guys that are not seen. I mean, we're going to see the four-star and five-star just because – we're on the sideline just mm. about every weekend. Mm. But, you know, I, I kind of like the guy that's not getting that exposure. And let's let's dive into a few of these guys. Mm. Uh, you know, I had a chance to see several of these guys at the Select 50 showcases. Uh, they're now Select 50 All-Americans, and we got an MVP that we'll talk about. So uh, go ahead and start. I'm going to rattle off some names. Bajan Robinson. I don't need to say anything else, right? Beast. <laughs> Ross Ulugulu Masuli. Big old lineman starting San Diego State Aztecs right now. Peace. Raymond Cottrell, University of Georgia commit. Jalen Brown, LSU wide receiver commit. Those are the last four Select 50 National Player of the Years. The dude we're about to talk about may not have the accolades and the resumes playing for that 5A, 6A powerhouse. But this guy, Deshaun Chairs, running back, Elkins High School, Arkansas. 5'8", 175 pounds of thunder and lightning all rolled into one. You know, outside the studio today, you and I were just shooting the breeze and we're talking about, you know, it's easy to compare people to NFL athletes. People can relate better. He's a high school young man. Let's not get crazy. We're not saying this man is who I'm about to compare him to. But when I watch him play football, when he came to multiple select 50s and he won the all-showcase running back at our first event that you attended, and then he knew there was other select 50s coming up in the region, and he wanted to go to that to not only defend his crown, but to see what talent was from Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, what have you. He won it again against a different bet of talent. Deshaun Chairs reminds me, growing up in the Northeast, Jersey, New York, of Tiki Barber. Ooh. A modern, modern-day Austin Eckler. Ooh. A guy, 5'8", 175. We're not talking Brandon Jacobs size. We're not talking Derrick Henry. But this is a dude that can run between the tackles, off tackle, 
This is a guy that could catch it in the flat, run the wheel. Heck, you can even put him in slot to create those mismatches. This is a guy that can block blitzing linebackers and DBs and safeties. This is a guy that does it all. He's a lunch pail throwback football player out there in Elkins, Arkansas. The coaching staff is doing a phenomenal job out there molding this young man. He's got just under 1,500 rushing yards this year, 20-something receptions, 22 touchdowns. And uh, this is a young man who's going to be taking a visit to Arkansas State I'm going to say it right now. Arkansas State, very smart. Other schools, get on the wagon because this young man is what you want to represent your culture, your program, your locker room. This is the guy that puts in the work. Deshaun Chair, Select 50, 2022 National Player of the Year, joining that decorated group that I mentioned to you before. Deshaun Chairs, you saw him. What are your thoughts? Well, I think another thing that, that, that you didn't mention that makes this game well-rounded uh, is the blocking. Mm. He, he won every rep against linebackers one-on-one. -on -one. And every time I saw him, he got better. Uh, we're talking about a guy that's kind of – I, I put it in uh, – you just saw this guy at Kansas State, Deuce Vaughn. Mm. This, it's <laughs> just who he reminds you. Great very comparison. shifty. Ooh, wow. Very shifty in great space. Comparison. But he can tote the load in between the tackles, knows how to get small, great hands. If Arkansas State continues this, they're nailing down a guy like we talked about last week. You know, he may not be where he, he wants to go, but this is a place where he can go in and set records and be a name and leave his name, his legacy there. Definitely a player you need to know coming out of Arkansas. Mm, I agree. So to elaborate further on some other standout Select 50 first-team All-Americans, you know, we're going to go in the trenches. We're going to go to the big uglies right there in, in the it. trenches, man, and we're going to talk O-line. Marcus, you saw this young man, six foot five, 305 pounds, and looks every bit of it. He looked like Taylor Lewin, uh, Lewin's uh, twin brother, you know, the guy that played for Michigan, Tennessee Titan, what have you. This guy, Peyton Polk from Houghton, Louisiana, recruited by Auburn, recruited by the Raysian Cajuns and some other programs. This is a guy that every D tackle, nose tackle, let's just say they did not win a rep. This was a man against, yes, other men, but we're talking, you know, if someone said Greek God type strength, this dude, unbelievable. So, because we realize that the D tackles at this decorated event, I mean, these D tackles got resumes, they're being recruited, they're prospects. So, you said, all right, you know what? We got 15 split DNs, we got 15 defensive ends here, all between 6'3, 6 6'5, 6 that tweener size, 220, 245, whatever. So, we said, all right. Peyton, snap the ball. We're going to put a DN over here. We're going to simulate stunt. We want to see how you pick up a guy coming across. So we simulated a stunt. This guy was manhandling, manhandling these defensive ends. This is a guy, Peyton Polk, who, you know what, simply earned it. By the end of the event, the dude had no shirt on. I was just about to go there. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and do you want to explain? I mean, guys that were yeah. trying to figure out how to get by him, so they're right. like, you know, we're going to hold him to grab his shirt. Yeah. It didn't work. Yeah. Let's just say he got a new Select 50 shirt. But, you know, <laughs> so, some other O linemen, um, Marcus and Coach Stefan, I want to talk about. You know, you talk about TCU, undefeated, could be in the Final Four playoff national championship picture. They got a guy coming in, Benjamin Taylor Whitfield from Duncanville High School. 6'5", 285 pounds, 83-inch wingspan. This man with a hat backwards at the event, his hat was never knocked off. <laughs> was going, and he, this was the event Peyton Polk was at and Ada Lynch and some other dudes we're going to talk about. This guy was just well-coached, mechanically sound, very sharp, tremendous footwork, um, tremendous strong, thick lower body. And, and Marcus, I don't know your opinion, but I saw someone that was more mechanically sound than physically mature, and that's scary to me. Normally, it's the opposite. Normally, you get these big dudes who got to learn the mechanics. This is a guy who, who knows what happens year one when he's on campus at TCU. What is he capable of once he gets in that strength and conditioning program? But Benjamin Taylor Whitfield, do you want to say anything about him? Well, I think he's the leader and one of the catalysts on that offensive line. But I can for mm -hmm. one of the best backs in the country, and Caden Durham, mm -hmm. a highly recruited, highly decorated guy. He's uh, the anchor this year. Of course, this is what they do over at Duncanville. They got a big game against Brian coming out of the gate a home game uh, in the by district round. Definitely agree. He's also got another running mate that's coming in, uh, you know, Bubba from uh, South Oak Cliff. They're doing a big thing. I watched uh, Coach Sonny Dykes last night on Sports Center talking about the game leading up this week. They're doing it the right way. They're really trying to close the gates around the DFW and not let these guys out. And Whitfield's one of the top uh, in the 2023 class coming out of this area, definitely in the state. 
uh, long arms, lengthy, can run, can pull. That's what you want to see. We've talked about that in the last couple of weeks about offensive linemen. I don't want to just see you block. I want to see how you pull, how you get out. Are you athletic? Can you bend? How's your punch? Both of these guys have that. And they uh, put that on, on showcase at the Select 50. Definitely two guys that you need to know about. Well said. I, mean, I want to go from Dunkerville, the Max Prep number 14 ranked team in the country, to the number 15 ranked team in the country, Denton Geyer. Mm -hmm. First off, these coaches are amazing. doing an amazing job. Every amazing. program we talk about know this. The men at this table appreciate and respect and learn from these coaching staffs. The job they're doing at molding talent, tip of the cap to them. But two other Select 50 first team All Americans, Willie Goodacre, six foot five and a legit 300 pounds, a guy that could play tackle, a guy that could even play at guard if you want to. That's how athletic he is, pulling and what have you. And also his teammate, Josiah Martin, six feet, about 175, 180 pounds, recently offered by Penn State. Uh, unbelievable talents. Came out there against um, some, uh, Willie Goodacre. If, if, if Benjamin Taylor Whitfield has an 83-inch wingspan, I wonder what Willie Goodacre is. That dude was a beast. That dude, I remember one rep he lost. One rep he lost. And I remember he his reaction. I remember his he reaction to, to losing that rep. Huh? He wanted to run it back. Uh-huh. He, he ran it back. And let's just say this. I'm glad I'm not that man he went against. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say about that. Um, anything you want to say about the Denton Geyer athletes before we graduate to some other players here? Willie Goodacre is, as advertised, uh, you know, I, I told you before I left, he was a power five guy. And, I, be, uh, you know, the next week we're talking about Nebraska's on him now. Uh, he had an official visit there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Josiah, quick in space, great hands, catch radius. And his teammate on the other side, we've already talked about him, Landon Sides. Oh. <laughs> this guy's going to be – He's going to be a game breaker. You know, again, are you talking about a school stealing one? UIW Incarnate Word stole this guy. We're talking about a guy that can definitely that. Yeah. play at the next level, speed, hands, and and he's really benefiting from being one of the favorite targets of Jackson Arnold. They, they seem to have a, a chemistry that's developed through the work that they did this summer. Uh, and I've I've really been on the size bandwagon since I saw him. I had a chance to see him against uh, Alito and talk to him a little bit. Talk to all three of the guys at the Alito game. Didn't guys the favorite right now coming out of 6A D2. Uh, it's it's going to be, you know, we'll talk about this in the next couple of weeks, uh, but they got fly my markets this week. These guys are definitely what you look for in a high school program. Uh, Kyle Keese, I believe, is the strength and conditioning coach over there. Those guys are second to none. Uh, this is the, the favorite coming out of 6A D2, and it's because the three of these guys are cornerstone athletes. Uh, Sides and Arnold are, are uh, uh, seniors, but uh, – Josiah Martin and Goodacre will be back. Mm -hmm. They're cornerstones to that particular program, and those, that's the reason they're successful. Well, before we rapid fire on four other uh, student athletes, select 50 All-Americans, Landon Sides, you want to talk about a field general on that field. He was at that event with some decorated skill position players. And, gentlemen, this was a guy hooting and hollering for everyone during their reps, pushing them during their reps. This is a guy who, you know what, was being recruited and offered by our military institutions, West Point, Navy, et cetera. That just tells you high character. That tells you a well-coached, a well-raised young man. So, again, Denton Geyer, you know, uh, uh, outstanding student athletes. They have great one right program. after the other. Yeah, great but, program. But moving, moving forward, should I rattle off some Yes, sir. Here yes, right sir. Here? You know, Coach, you were talking before about college camps. And if you ain't invited, if you're a junior, senior, and you're not invited – Probably not getting recruited, and you probably shouldn't go. But there was an asterisk, and we could play it back. You said, unless, unless you have something that stands out. So, Coach, let me ask you this, Coach Stefan. A legit six foot seven, a legit 280 pounds, size 17 shoe, 85-plus inch wingspan, and you're a class of 2024 left tackle. Is that a guy that has the asterisk next to it that, you know what? It's all right to have mom and dad sign up for a college camp if you're not invited. Simple as that. If you have those measurements, you can go to any camp in the country. Well said. As soon as you walk in, you will be seen because you stand ahead of everybody else. Go. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Here, here's here's a, an, an amazing example. And, Marcus, you were at both these events. Aiden Lynch from Mount Olive High School in New Jersey. 
Class of 2024, 6'7", 280 pounds. Currently being recruited by Duke, Pittsburgh, Rutgers, uh, UConn. Has an offer from Old Dominion University, his first. This is a guy that came to a Texas event, never having gone against talent from this region. And that happened to be the event. We had 15 DNs from throughout this entire region uh, of, of Texas and surrounding states. This is a man that was at the event that Benjamin Taylor Whitfield was at, Willie Goodacre was at, Peyton Polk, the guys that we're sitting here celebrating who are on this All-American team. Aiden Lynch is a first-team All-American, but it wasn't because of his first performance out of the Select 50. The Select 50, he couldn't really, uh, he, it, it took an adjustment period for him to handle that rush in. But he learned, he watched the film, because at the Select 50, all film is provided to the athletes to use not only from a learning standpoint, but to use for recruiting purposes. He won his reps, he lost some reps. The next event, he came back with equal talent uh, across the line on the D-line side, and he dominated. He dominated. There was a few words I heard that man say that day, and those words were, not my quarterback. Everyone seemed to be getting chippy with this guy, and he wasn't saying any words. It was just his play. They couldn't get by him. This is a dude who worked on his, his drop back, his footwork, and what have you, worked on his punch inside the pads, and uh, his performance at the second Select 50 launched him into his uh, All-American voting process, mm -hmm. but also the fact that he's having all these official and unofficials now. So Aiden Lynch is a guy I want to talk about. Anything you want to say, Mark? Well, Aiden Lynch is the guy that when he steps off the plane and steps off the bus, you notice him immediately. Uh, very long arms. But the bend is what's different, uh, and he's got a sleek build. You know, these, well these offensive linemen now, you know, the, the, the days of the guy with the big gut, the big beer belly are gone. These guys are athletic. This is the guy that, you know, if you put your hands up, you know, the measurables, and when you go to a combine setting, he fits the mold of that, uh, kind of like uh, Goodacre. You know, when he steps off the bus, you're going to know he's there. But his punch – uh, his ability to change directions with his hips, those are the things that kind of set him apart. And that's the reason that, you know, he's on this uh, All-American list is he's fitting that mold. You know, Old Dominion jumped on him early. You know, he's got a few offers from Pitt up in the Northeast. A guy, if he's living in Texas, he'll be, you know, one of the highly ranked guys just because, you know, he's going to be a leader on there. And that's, that's kind of what you want from an offensive lineman. Mm. Not getting my quarterback, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take a small break. We're going to bring in Coach Penrice. From Houston, Texas, from My Booker T. Washington High School. He's going to call in, talk about the successful season that the Eagles are having, they're undefeated, district champs, and headed to the playoffs for the first time in a long time. Here on the On Your Mark Show, powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. What's happening? So, it's your boy Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark Show. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete. Do you just wake up and go hard? Be epic. We have a new studio home. Fishbowl Studios. The On Your Mark Show is going to bring it to you every Wednesday. Every week we're going to talk recruiting, the best games around the state, and in the DFW we'll get parents, players, coaches involved right here at Fishbowl Studios. Wednesday from 11 to 12. You can follow us on Facebook at On The Mark Sports. On Twitter at MarkHen44 on IG, Instagram at MarkHen underscore 44. We are epic every week. Check out the On Your Mark show at Fishbowl Studios. We out. We're back here on the On Your Mark show, powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete, we just wake up and go hard. And I'm going to set the stage for this next guest. He's a coach down in the Houston area from Booker T. Washington High School, Coach George Penrice. The Washington Eagles are 10-0 for the first time since 1994. This guy it comes from a football legacy family <laughs> in the area where I grew up on the north side of Houston, studio with Cobras. Anytime you say Penrice around in my neighborhood, yeah, they're well God. known. Uh, grew up and playing with some of his cousins. Uh, went to school with his sister as well. But just to see the Eagles successful, this is what we want. This is why I'm so, super proud as an alumni as well. But just seeing these guys be successful. Coach Penrice, how you doing? Man, I'm doing well, man. How about you this morning? Man, great, man. We appreciate you joining us here on, the, on your Mark show. But uh, what I like to do with coaches is kind of go over where you got started in coaching. Uh, you know, like I just said, uh, the Penrice name is synonymous where we grew up around in that area on the north side of Houston, Studio with Acres Home. You guys are, are, you know, a football family. But just talk about how you got into coaching. Uh, for sure, man. Uh, I started off 
um, in Little League football, um, played for my dad, Walter Penrice, um, for an organization called the Studio Wood Cobras. Um, it was established in around 1976. Um, I played um, about, started about 1990 when I was seven years old. Um, I played for my dad for about seven to about nine years old. Um, and then I also played for our junior varsity team um, as I was nine and ten. Uh, went to went to um, four Super Bowls um, and won all of those, man. And uh, came back and, and coached as well and won two Super Bowls as a coach. So it's kind of like I was kind of born into it, man, with my father being a coach. And, um, and I think this teaching and coaching goes hand in hand, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, definitely, you know, I, shout out to Coach Penrice. I remember I was on one of the teams as a seven-year-old, one of the first teams, Coach Bud. Uh, those guys really know what coaching is. Old school coaching, you know. It's no, no, no crying, no nothing. Your mom is on the sideline. None of that kind of stuff with student with Cobras. If you're a student with Cobra, you're a student with Cobra for life. And mm. uh, you know, the dream as a student with Cobra is to play for the Washington Eagles. Uh, the color scheme was the same. You, we grew up idolizing those guys. Uh, talk about your transition to Washington and what that means to you as well. Oh, well, yes, sir. As you said, um, you know, our home fields were Booker T. Washington, so we played on campus, and um, with us wearing the blue and gold, it kind of was like that mindset that we already go there. Um, so, you know, just that process, man, and me going to Washington and being a graduate and then now coming full circle to um, come back and coach, man, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's still kind of like <laughs> trying to pinch myself, you know, to wake up. This, this is not something that everybody has the opportunity to do. Absolutely. It's kind of a dream come true. And, uh, you know, as a kid growing up over there, you, you dream about playing on that field. You dream about playing in the blue and gold. And you dream about being an eagle. Uh, sort of the same kind of mindset that I came up with as well. Uh, talk about what you know about uh, Washington. You know, as a kid growing up, uh, you spoke about playing for the Cobras in the 1990s. That was the kind of time when I was there as a player. Uh, you know, talk about that a little bit because everybody kind of talks about uh, you know, back in that time, the Aldeans, uh, the Yates, uh, you know, even Eisenhower. But, you know, when I was in school and when you were a kid growing up, you know, Washington was revelant in the Houston area. Yes, Washington was um, a sports school, man, in general. Not just football. Um, man, those stadiums, those stands were packed. Um, you had alumni everywhere. Um, you had athletes just going to school. Um, just everything. Um, it was those 90s um, was, was the time to be. Uh, I graduated in 2002. I actually um, touched campus in 1999. Um, looking at some of the guys, you know, that kind of came ahead of us, like the, the Will, Willie Dennis, some of the, the 1994 um, season. Um, some of the, the Kenneth Davis, who played receiver, uh, Clarence Formers. Um, I played with him with the Cobras and had, you know, played with him and watched um, Kerry Dixon, who wanted to do great things from Washington as well. Um, the, the list can go on, man, um, as far as those athletes that came out of Washington. Absolutely. You named some of the guys. You know, shout out to my guy Willie Dennis. We close friends, grew up together. But let's talk about the Eagles right now. Uh, I had a chance to visit you guys during practice in the summer. Uh, also during your media day. Shout out to you guys for putting on a great media day. Loved it. Definitely will be back again. But I noticed that you guys as a coaching staff set the tone. Everything was quick, quick pace. You guys didn't let the guys rest on anything. Hey, let's get this done. It was a sense of urgency. And talk about how that's carried over into your season. Uh, yes, sir, man. We've been putting in that work, man, since we lost our last game of last year, man. That was around sometime in November. Um, <clears throat> you know, the the students were trying to buy in. You know, we were kind of looked at as a as a team that was a team of the past um, and that we weren't going to turn that corner. Um, so we kind of been preaching that, you know, who it's about, it's about us, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not about nobody else. Because she came in with that attitude to where it's about us. It's about the team. It's not about the parents. It's not about the teachers in the building. It's about the brothers who are going in the trenches with you. Um, and they kind of bought in. So, you know, we, who it's about, it's about us, man. It's about us, um, Mr. Mark. And, um, you know, we every day is a work day when we come in. You know, we talk about a work day. We talk about putting in at work. And as you know, like I know, anything can happen in a work day. You can show up to work, but somebody can be absent or somebody can be this and that. But the work day has to go on. Um, our motto is punch the clock. And, you know, we still got to get it done so we can get paid. We try to win the day so we can win. Winning the day looks like for us, win the day in the classroom, the hallways, and on the field. Well, you definitely win it on the field. Congratulations on a 10 and 0 season. By district round is coming up. Uh, and also, you guys won a district championship as well. 
Now, sure. you, you're the party starter. Uh, we kind of talked about that, and we've been in touch, uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks. You got the Party Boys. Shout out to those guys. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, a little feature on the Party Boys on PrepRedZone.com, PrepRedZone Texas. Talk about those guys a little bit and how you're the architect of those playmakers. Man, those guys, man, are just special guys, man. Uh, they make coaching very easy, man. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I take those guys through a series of, um, you know, little make or miss type drills. And just to try to have fun with them. Uh, my position group is the quarterback and the running back. And so um, that backfield, we call ourselves the party starters because, uh, you know, there's a song called uh, Flex. And in the chorus, he says, we in that thing. So when we talk about that thing, we talking about the touchdown. We're trying to get in it. So, uh, you know, I put them through a, a series of practice um, drills. I'm like a jump cut series. You know, we jump cut. We double jump cut. We have like a behind the back jump cut series, you know. Um, our motto was make a miss, and I consider myself a make a miss specialist. So, you know, by the time we get in that end zone, we're trying to party, man. We're trying to get in there, try to get our whole position group in, and you know, it, it kind of starts with us, man. We try to um, play fast and execute. Well, definitely, you guys have been executing. Uh, those guys have been putting up some amazing numbers, and you know, you got a freshman in Tremble. Uh, talk about him a little bit. He, he's kind of the young guy, but he plays big at times. Oh, yeah, man. Trumbo, I'm going to actually coach him as well with the Studewood Cobras. Man, Trumbo has some, some leadership skills um, and, and has some moves that can just kind of leave you standing still. Um, has speed of a grown man. I mean, like once he's out in the open, um, you can just start striking up the band or you can just kind of wave your hand. Uh, <clears throat> that guy is pretty special, man. And uh, the electric plays that he's making is rubbing off on the team. And, um, uh, the backfield that I coach, they compete with each other. You know, it's kind of like, oh, I see you. You got one? Well, let me go get one. And it's just kind of fun to be around, man. Um, the atmosphere and everything, you know, he came in. He he bought into the system and just jumped right in line. But it's got to eat workday mentality. Definitely. He's a guy that really, uh, when you turn on the tape, he stands out as well as the other guys that are in the party boys' backfield. Uh, talk about the team this week, uh, your preparation uh, for the playoffs, uh, you know, how big is that for you guys and what the mindset is? And then when before you get off, got to tell everybody what, about Burn the Boat. Oh, yes, sir. So I'll definitely be able to tie both of those in together. So our coach's message this week is to do your one individual job. You know, you do your one individual job. That's what Coach C comes in and preaches to us, you know, and we'll be successful. Uh, what does successful look like for us? Fly around on defense, execute on offense. Play at 110. Give max effort. All right, 110% and play at 110% speed. All right, and that's how we become one and zero every week. All right, that's our message that we preach to the boys. As far as the burning boat mentality, all right, Coach C wanted to come up with a motto for every football season. And for this football season, we started off going on to the road. All right, our first three preseason games were on the road. We went to Warden, we went to Austin, and we went to Pasadena. So, burn the boat for us means going on the road and winning. All right? Um, Coach C is the captain of our ship. He guides us left or right or in, even into a foreign territory. But once we get off that boat, once we get off that bus, we're burning the boat. There's no turning back. We're either going to win, um, take over, in your land and get a win in that foreign land or in that hostile environment. So that's where Burn the Boat came from for us. Once we get off the bus, once we get off the boat, there's no turning back. No turning back. If you feel like you're afraid, you feel like you want to get back on the boat, get back on the bus and leave, we've burnt that up. The only way for us to leave and get back to Washington High School is to take over that foreign um, or that, that, that um, home field that we're taking over and come back in one of their boats. But other than that, we're burning the boat, man. No turning back. George, y'all might want to uh, go ahead and lock that in because somebody's going to steal that. What's up, my guy? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, George. Uh, yes, sir. Quick question, man. This is Coach Stefan. Um, How you doing, Coach? Man, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I, I sent Mark the um, – knowing y'all came up together, I was like, man, we got to get George on there. Uh, one oh, one sure, quick man. question, though. How is my sled doing, man? <laughs> you know, he was one of the first guys to buy my sled. Big you Bertha. know, Little Bertha. He, oh, Little Bertha. Yeah, when I when Little I started Bertha. producing Little man. Bertha. 
George is like, man, Bertha, I got to get man, one. And little Bertha is, is helping us with our lower body strength. You know what I mean? Helping us be explosive. And it helps us accelerate. All right? So when we, we run it, we talk about pressing the hole. Um, I don't like for the guys to just kind of get the ball and bounce outside. So it helps us, uh, you know, stay down in that midline and press the hole. And it really helps us with our acceleration. I love you know it. I mean, it's like another, another, um, you know, it's like another tool that we can use almost like with the resistance, you know, resistance and it's helping us with our acceleration. So, I love it. Little burst. Yes, sir. I love it. No, we got to link up too, man, in the off season and, and, and discuss some more stuff. So I'm looking forward to it, big guy. Coach sure, Rice. Man. And I'm still rocking those epic shades, man. Every play I compete, man. I'm still rocking those shades. Yes, man. sir. There it man. is. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. I got to see you some more, man. I got you. Coach, Coach, we got a quick question for you from Chris Dubeck. Go ahead. Coach, Coach Ben Rice, I, I, it ain't a question. I just got to let you know this. this. This is Chris from Select 50, and I think it's always a huge compliment when someone says, I know of you. You are an educator. And the fact that you've influenced Marcus, and he's the man he is now because you have first touched his life, I think that's beautiful. But I simply just want to say this to the party starter. More human man, beings you so need much. you in their life. More human beings need Coach Penrice in their life. That's I it I got to say. I, agree I, I definitely agree. Great I man. Definitely Great agree. brother. Well, Coach. Man, I thank you all so much. We're going to let you get back to class. Uh, good luck this week. Uh, tell everybody, everybody's uh, social media is uh, where they can follow Booker T. Washington uh, when they take on uh, the first week of the playoffs this week. Okay, well, you can follow us um, at Booker T. Washington um, on Twitter. Uh, you know, Coach Chatham is running that page. Um, you can find me um, – on there is Coach Penrice um, on the Twitter handle. Um, but this weekend, we will, we will be going out to Hopper Stadium to take on Brazosport at 7 p.m. Friday night. And right, we're going to try to walk in the trap and take over that trap. We're going to try to burn the boat. Well, oh, baby. I definitely got faith in you guys burning the boat all the yeah. way. We will be there, man. Definitely appreciate you hopping on the On Your Mark show. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Repair. We'll play, take a small break, and we'll be right back to close the show out. Appreciate you, Coach. Appreciate you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. What's happening? It's your boy Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark show. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete. Do you just wake up and go hard? Be epic. We have a new studio home, Fishbowl Studios. The On Your Mark show is going to bring it to you every Wednesday. Every week, we're going to talk recruiting, the best games around the state, and in the DFW, we'll get parents, players, coaches involved right here at Fishbowl Studios. Wednesday from 11 to 12. You can follow us on Facebook at On The Mark Sports, on Twitter at Mark. Markin44 on IG, Instagram at Markin underscore 44. We are epic every week. Check out the On Your Mark show at Fishbowl Studios. We out. We're back on the On Your Mark show for final thoughts. Chris, you got a big event coming up. Talk about that a little bit. I'm humbled and privileged to work with a man by the name of Forrest West, and I'm a partner in a group called Flexwork Sports. And Bajan Robinson, University of Texas Longhorn, one of the best running backs Ooh, in the country. Absolutely. 2018 Select 50 National Player of the Year. He's giving back to the community, and he's doing a youth football camp on Friday, April 14th in the greater Austin area. Bottom line, it's a day of play, learning and interaction with Bajan Robinson for all youth football players, co-ed. So hopefully see everyone out there in the greater Austin area. And Marcus, I'm going to say this right now about a player. Everyone you all need to know, Florida, Escambia County. Six foot, 175 pounds, cover DB, two-time, select 50 All-American, Tyrell Marshall, Navarre High School. If you don't know it, now you do. Definitely, I, I had a chance to see a little bit of film that you sent me on him. Uh, he's a next-level defensive back. Uh, his aggressiveness and his ability to shut down guys right there in front of the place, press well, uh, can get his hands on you and reroute the receiver. That's, those are things that you want out of a next-level defensive back. And, uh, you know, Chris – Definitely appreciate you coming on here on the On Your Thank Mark you Show. Sir. Shouldn't be Thank your you. last time. When you got something you want to announce to come back, come back and highlight. Oh, man, I can't thank you enough. I, it's infectious being around you guys. You guys are magnetic, and I, I, and I adore you both. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And this is the part of the show where Big Hand speaks. What is your drive? What's your passion? You know, as you can see around these guys, passionate about what we do. I'm passionate about this. You know, this is not, you know, my, my uh, what I do day to day as my work, but this is what I'm passionate about. This is what drives me just to be around uh, the game, you know, as a, as a, as a goddess on the outside now, as a scout, uh, as a writer, as a media, I keep my, uh, you know, my feet in this thing. You know what I'm saying? So when we say something, we mean it. Uh, that's what drives me. That's my passion. Find your passion. 
make your passion uh, something that you can definitely put your all into and put your your ten toes down. This is what you want to do. Find your passion. Let it lead you. And we'll be back next week from Fishbowl Studios here on the On Your Mark show from 11 to 12, powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Go to everyplayicompete.com. We talked about the Epic Shades. You see Iron Sharp as Iron. We'll be back next week for Coach Johnson, Chris Dubeck. I am Mark Henry. Tap in, retweet, reshare, live from the Fishbowl Studio on the Fishbowl Network, the On Your Mark show. We out. Share, share, share. Let's get it. What's happening? It's your boy Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark show. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete. Do you just wake up and go hard? Be epic. We have a new studio home. Fishbowl Studios. The On Your Mark show is going to bring it to you every Wednesday. Every week we're going to talk recruiting, the best games around the state, and in the DFW we'll get parents, players, coaches involved right here at Fishbowl Studios. Wednesday from 11 to 12. You can follow us on Facebook at On The Mark Sports, on Twitter at MarkHen44, on IG, Instagram at MarkHen underscore 44. We are epic every week. Check out the On Your Mark show at Fishbowl Studios. We out.